Could there actually be something uplifting and decent about this film? No, of course not. Yes, the head alien boss informs the other aliens that Billy got a hold of the laser gun and has been using it like a toy until he realizes its power. So the aliens must, of course, you guessed it, get it back! A scene with no dialogue, a scene with no dialogue, a scene with no dialogue. So let us press on. And so now we cut to the birthday party. Yes, where they're about to cut the cake. And I guess Billy actually did show up because, well, there he is in the same unbuttoned shirt. And there are the same nerds who gave him such a hard time earlier. Seriously, that one fellow over there, he looks so dorky. <sighs> Seriously, this one fellow here looks so dorky. I can't believe anybody would be antagonized or frightened of him. But apparently they're, they're trying to barbecue some hot franks on the grill, but this one girl's not impressed by his hot frank. So he pushes her in the pool because he made him because she made fun of her fallacy. Because she made fun of his fallacy. So he has to act like a dick about it. Billy's only here just to sunbathe a little bit and basically act cool, not even bothering to get into the water. Almost as if he were a typical beach bum. Hmm, maybe nobody wants any cake because the cake tastes like mud. But sure enough, there's Billy still trying to be cool. Mm, so she's really not that popular. It's really more about the swimming pool. So Billy wants to know where Kathy is now, but apparently she went inside the club to get cake. Girls at the pool. Arousal level five. The truth is he's actually here looking around for Kathy. That's his lady friend, I suppose. But he cannot seem to find her anywhere. What a predicament, Billy. What are you going to do? But Billy witnesses this one attempted rape, I suppose. By some young fellow in a striped shirt, I guess. Oh, it's those idiots who antagonized him earlier at the gas station. Yeah, striped shirt man, and... How many more horse jack jokes can I make here? Punch, 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 in the most phoniest manner possible for this film. But it's all right. Billy isn't really angry with Kathy, just, well, maybe a little upset at this point. After all, she was getting it from somebody named Froggy. Is he having a dream or some strange acid trip? Well, being that this is the 1970s, anything is possible. Striped Shirt Bully Boy and Rizzo from Greece, I suppose, are about to go out for a little joyride in the evening, blissfully unaware that Billy has already mutated into an alien and he's obsessed with the laser gun. Will somebody please do something already? Yes! Billy has laser gunned Bully Boy's car. And apparently it took basically three takes to show us the blow of the devastation. Uh, three takes to show us the devastation. Boop, 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 and 
did I mention, a very big resounding BOO! And so now essentially our stone sheriff and, well, cooter from the Dukes of Hazard need to get a statement from somebody named Donnie, I guess. I guess that was Bully Boy's name about the car that blowed up. Boom! Booby goes! He just enjoys blowing things up! Obviously, because he has become addicted to the laser gun. It is an instrument of seduction. The seductive powers and hold that it has over him are mind-boggling. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess I was overacting a bit there. Now it's time for the sheriffs to get a statement from... Wait, does the sheriff's car actually have a license plate that reads 234 Loon? Well, I should give this man credit. He certainly has better fashion sense than most of the men I've seen in the Spider-Man film I recently reviewed. You know, in between us, I think it was a flying and so now, the sheriffs are actually questioning the two girls and Froggy. Hmm. This is a very interesting scar. Did you get this from a man in high heels? And Silk Panties, who also sang I Can Make You a Man. Actually, I believe this is Roddy McDowell. Finally! A big-name star in an otherwise cheesy, ridiculous, and also a hard-to-believe B-movie. Oh dear, it seems that Alien Billy is going to shoot this car. And I suppose it'll we'll have to see at least three takes of it rolling down the hill in flames. And three more takes of it exploding. This, of course, is all being observed by the E.T.-like aliens. It would be nice if we had subtitles to understand what they were saying. And so now Billy is pulled over by Cooter from Dukes of Hazard. And amazing, he's not wearing the same unbuttoned shirt and the same jeans. He, he actually changed his outfit. What kind, what madness is this? But of course, Billy is sort of under arrest as, well, the sheriffs want to ask him all sorts of questions about what happened to all those cars exploding. I'm sure these bumpkins will come to that realization soon. So Pete punches Belly in the Billy, I mean Billy in the Belly, and well, uh, that's really the way to get answers, isn't it? So Roscoe P. Coltrane questions him, and of course the best dressed detective in history shows up, like I said, at least they've got better fashion sense than Spider-Man Strikes Back. So he shows them the little metal plate in his stomach. Thanks for coming in. And I suppose with that, he's uh, free to go. He is just free to go. Just, just like that. And so the world's best dressed detective has a chat with a local scientist over something or rather. But they analyze everything through a microscope. And apparently Mr. Mom is somehow able to identify the little metal piece that is with inside Billy's chest. <clears throat> the scientists analyze it and whatever it is inside Billy's chest is growing and will eventually cause him to alien out totally. So this causes an emergency alert one. If we get to emergency alert three, we are in trouble. So our dim-witted sheriffs are just waiting around the gas station, blissfully unaware that they're probably well, maybe minutes away from their own deaths. 
They have no idea what's going to happen to them, do they? Well, it seems Billy only mutates into an alien at night. And I suppose the boom, the toilet explodes in three takes as well. So long, Sheriff Cooter. Nobody liked you anyway, you redneck tit. Oh, Lord. Somehow I doubt very much that this ever gets any better. I mean, what is the point of any of this anymore? It's just some young man, you know, in an unbuttoned shirt. You know, running around, and basically blasting everything he sees. And he's slowly turning into an alien himself. All you need to do is just look at that face. I mean, really, would you just look at this face? Now isn't this a face to die for? And so now Billy actually gets to use the laser gun up close and shoot an individual. So our stone sheriff is, well, dead now. And with the worst possible transition imaginable, well, Billy is enjoying a sexy sleepover in the bushes with his girlfriend Kathy. What will happen next? Tune in for chapter three to learn the rest. Oh, Lord. It does not get any better, does it? I mean, I've sat through already two-thirds of this film, and it's still not getting any better. Well, I guess we'll have to see in Chapter 3 if it does get any better. Until then, this has been Les Thespian, saying I shall see you in Chapter 3.